In this video, we talk about creating a remote repository on GitHub and also how to push all your local repository work to GitHub. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, we've talked about this diagram before if you watch one of my previous videos, but if not, we're gonna cover it right now real quick. So we have all of our files and everything in our working directory, right? That's where we do our work on our computer. It's our local device and so on. That's our working directory. Then when we're ready to, to commit some files, what we first need to do is move them to the staging index or staging area, which is also on our local device. And it basically pre prepares the files for committing. And when we commit the files, then we move them up to our repository and they go to our local repository, again, on our local device. And then if we're doing a remote repository, which we're using GitHub because we're using Git, um, then we could also push the files from our local repository over to the remote repository over here on GitHub. Now that's what we're gonna be doing in this video and some of the following videos is the remote repositories. And of course the benefits for a remote repository, which is not a local one, right? It's not on your computer, it's off in the clouds, um, is that, you know, it's like backup, right? So if your local device explodes or catches on fire, well, you're not gonna lose your entire project because you have it backed up online in the remote repository. Also, the most, like one of the biggest advantages of course is collaboration. So you can have multiple people, multiple developers going into the same project at the same time, working on different branches, committing those changes and you know merging branches and everything else. So it's a big collaboration platform that you can use to work with other people. And of course that's a lot better than, you know, emailing files back and forth and all that sorts of stuff. Like it keeps track of the versions and the commits and the branches and all that stuff. So we're gonna go through it and you're gonna see it. So of course, first things first, you probably need to go to GitHub and create an account if you don't have one already. So I assume you're able to set up your GitHub account if you didn't have one. Um, uh, you could walk through the process, pretty simple. You just need the free account to get started. There are paid accounts which have their own special features, but free accounts, good enough to get started. Now there's basically two ways to kind of start with your remote repository. Like if you already have a local repository, you've already been doing some work on some files and some projects and you got some branches and all that other stuff going on in your local repository and you want to push it to a remote repository, you can do that. Alternatively, you can start with the remote repository and then kind of pull it down to your local system. So there's two different ways you could essentially go about getting started and I'm gonna show you both of them in this video. Now we've already created a local repository and we've done some work in our local repository from previous videos. So we're gonna do our local repository to the remote repository first, and then we'll do it the other way. All right, so to get started, we come up here and we can create, hit new here for repositories, new, or we can hit this little plus button, or if the, the user interface changes on GitHub, there might be another location, but the point is you're trying to create a new repository. And we go ahead and name our repository and I wanna go ahead and call it what I have it called on my device. So let me come over here. I got it called Git Videos. So I'll call it Git Videos. All right, cool. Uh, description's optional. You can add it later if you want to, public or private. And we're gonna leave it public. Private, you have to have a paid account in order to have private repository. So we'll leave it public. You can choose to initialize a repository with the readme, or you can of course create your own readme later. Same with git ignore and then license information. I'm gonna leave it default and create our repository. All right, so it gives us some information if we scroll down here. Now it says quick setup. If you've already done this before, you could just grab this link and you could go over to your, your console and start you know, doing work with it if you know what you're doing. But alternatively, it does give us line by line instructions on essentially how to connect to this remote repository. So that's pretty cool, right? So we'll do the, the instructions and then of course you can do it yourself once you know what you're doing. All right, so first we have this or create a new repository on the command line. We're not doing that. We already have our local repository, right? So we're gonna come down to this step and we're going to push an existing repository from the command line. So we need to follow this first, git remote add origin, and then our link to our remote repository. And let's go ahead and do that real quick and I'll explain what this, this line is doing. 
So let's come over to our system here. I'll go ahead and paste that in there. I'll run it real quick. And so what this command just did was the git remote, you know, saying that we're setting up our remote, we're doing our remote repository here, and then we're adding origin. So origin right here is an alias or a short name. And basically this is like the standard, uh, st standard alias for your remote repository. So you'd call your remote repository origin and basically you're setting this, it's basically like a variable if you're familiar with variables. Uh, it's basically setting origin, the origin variable as this link here. So instead of referring to this link a whole bunch of times, like you just say origin. So basically this origin alias represents this link here. Now you don't have to use origin. You can name it whatever the heck you wanna name it, but origin's like what people usually call it. So when you see origin, you know it's referring to the remote repository. All right, so now let's go ahead and push all of our work up into our remote repository. So let me just do a git log one line. And we see that we have several commits going on and we wanna go ahead and push them to our remote repository. And also let me go ahead and check the status. So git status, make sure everything is, we have a clean working tree or working tree clean, nothing to commit. So make sure we're all, we're all good, all clean. Let me double check my branches, see what branches we have. So we do have three different branches going on and I'm currently on the master branch. All right, so we kind of have a, a picture of what's going on. Uh, in our system here. And I wanna go ahead and push my master branch to our remote repository. So to push our master branch to our remote repository, we just do git push origin. And remember origin stands for this URL right here, our remote repository, git push, and then the branch name. So we're pushing the master branch to our remote repository. Go ahead and run that command real quick. It might take a few seconds. We don't have much many files going on. So it went through, gives us uh, some feedback of what happened, and then let's go over to GitHub and we'll go ahead and refresh the screen real quick and see what happened. All right, so now we see all the files that I've been working on are now in the remote repository. So that's pretty cool, right? So we got the folder up here, we got our index, we got our Java, we got our CSS style sheet, we got all our stuff in our remote repository. You can also see that we have our commits. So all the commits we previously did on our local repository got moved up to our remote repository so we can keep track of everything that's going on. So it's it's more visual than, you know, working in like on the command line. Like this can be a little cumbersome sometimes to read, you know, uh, whereas, you know, this is a little bit co more colorful and things of that nature. You see all your shawls and things like that. You can click into it and you can take a look at like what was going on when you submitted that commit, like what changed and so looking at things through GitHub, you know, can can be helpful because I think it's a better interface personally. Um, but obviously you need to know how to do the stuff in the command line interface, otherwise you would never get to GitHub. So then moving forward, basically every time you wanna move all your local repository up into the remote repository, you just go into your command line and you type in that whole git push origin and then whatever branch you're on. And you know, you update the remote repository with all the changes you've done in your local repository. So hopefully that makes some sense and you're starting to connect the dots on your local repository and how all that stuff works with your remote repository over on GitHub and hopefully things are starting to connect in your head. All right, so we just went through the process of if we already had a local repository and we wanna push it to a remote repository, but now let's go through the process if you don't already have a local repository and you're starting like from scratch, a brand new project, and you're starting with the remote repository first. So let's go back to GitHub real quick, and I'll go ahead and create a new repository and go ahead and name it demo, I'll just call it demo, and add a description, I'm gonna leave it public, I'm not gonna do anything over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and create my demo repository. All right, now what I wanna go ahead and do is grab this link right here to my remote repository. So I'll grab that link real quick, and then I'll head back over to git bash, or my command line. Now I'm currently in my git videos local repository, right, so I'm, I'm in my master branch, and I wanna go up a directory I don't I don't wanna build another repository inside of a repository or things can get a little complicated doing that. So I'm just gonna change my directory real quick, go up a directory to my desktop and 
Now what I want to do is go ahead and establish my, my new repository. So to do that, it's just git clone and then the link that I got from GitHub. And for some reason, I must have copied something funky. Let's try that again real quick. Copy and just come back in here. Git clone. And try again. Paste. All right, there we go. Press enter right here. And it says cloning into demo and warning you appear to have cloned an empty repository. And I did. There's nothing in that repository. So it's just letting me know. But now I need to go ahead and go into that repository as well. So change directory to demo. And now we see that I am in the master branch of my demo repository. So if I come over to my computer and I see that I now have a demo folder on my computer and I have my, my git folder, my dot git folder, that hidden one that has all the important files to make the uh, committing and version control stuff happen. So we got that going on. Now, of course I could go ahead and you know, start doing work in here. So I could set up, you know, index.html and I'll just create two, two dummy files just for fun style.css. All right, cool. Got two files going on. And then I can go ahead and, you know, just get add dot. So I added all my files to my staging area and then get commit and initial commit. So now they're in my local repository, right? So now I need to go ahead and push them to re my remote repository. So git push origin master and boom, just like that. It's gone ahead and pushed my local repository up into my remote repository. And also you might notice that I did not need to set origin as my alias. Like earlier in the video when I already had a local repository and I was pushing it brand new to the remote repository, I had to set an alias for that remote repository. But now that I've started remotely and came down to my local, uh, it knows what the origin is already. It already knows that path. So that's just one thing to note is you don't have to establish that alias when you're cloning and pulling down uh, of remote repository. All right, so now let's go over to GitHub and just see if everything's up there like we think it would be. I go ahead and refresh my screen real quick. And boom, we see that I have two files now, my index and my style sheet. We have the one commit. If I come over here, we have initial commit and it looks like everything is working like we thought it would. And that is it for this video. We covered a lot of stuff, so I think that this is a good stopping point. And if you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.